Good evening, friends. Stephen Bernoon here with Israeli News Live, and I have on Pastor Anthony uh, this evening. Pastor Anthony, thank you for joining me. Uh, it is, uh, of course, a pleasure to have you on, and I always appreciate, uh, especially when we do these things together, because you really a bundle of information, <laughs> and I wanted to talk with you about China, what's going on, what's China really up to, things like that. Uh, if you would first share with people how they can follow the work that you do, and we'll put that in the description below for you guys as well. Go ahead, Anthony. Uh, all right. Well, uh, as always, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me uh, to come on your channel and to uh, be able to take time to speak uh, to to you and uh, to your audience here. So we're always grateful uh, when we can come on and be a part of uh, what you guys are doing here at Israeli News Live. And uh, yeah, you guys can find me, uh, you know, we're on YouTube, Daily Excellence, uh, where uh, we have a, our main channel here. We have a, a backup channel called uh, DE Studios, uh, which we feature a lot of mics from around the world's content there. Uh, we're also available on Rumble and Patreon, same name, Daily Excellence. Um, you know, <clears throat> we, uh, we, are, we broadcast live on Tuesday nights um, at eight o'clock with, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to remember what I do. Oh yeah, Tuesday. It's a uh, Tuesday night live with uh, myself, and uh, we, um, you know, we go over current events, space weather, uh, earthquakes, things like that. And then uh, we broadcast on Wednesday evenings as well uh, with a segment called Pastor Talk. Uh, that's where me and my wife we get on and we do devotionals with everyone. Kind of a good family night. Uh, pray for pray for everyone online, which we've seen a lot of uh, great uh, testimonies from those prayer. A lot of answered prayer. Uh, we've seen people find, you know, get healings. We had one person who was uh, on the brink of death. Uh, we prayed for him that night. The next day they went home. I mean, stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, God's definitely answering prayers on that segment. And then, uh, you know, we do uh, special broadcasts with, uh, you know, various channels, uh, you know. Uh, and, of course, you've been a part of several of those broadcasts. And then, of course, uh, what we seem to be famous for is, uh, you know, the work that we do uh, with Mike from Council of Time and his uh, uh, his permission to allow us to broadcast things on YouTube. Uh, we're always grateful for uh, the ministry that uh, Council of Time does and being able to do that. So we are we're kind of we're kind of into everything, it seems like. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Anthony, mm -hmm. and those that are listening, you can you can look in the uh, link to, below there. You'll be able to get all that information that Anthony just shared with you. Um, Mick, before we get into the issue about China, can we, if you want to take and give people a little bit of update, uh, we mentioned, uh, BP Earthwatch, uh, Jesse was in your chat room just recently. And, uh, I think, I don't know if he joined on with you or if he's going to join on with you talking about the grand solar minimum. Uh, if you want to talk a little bit about that, uh, bring us up to speed on what you know on those issues there. I've kind of been out of the loop in that area. Uh, I shouldn't be because I know that there's very serious things going on. I know one of the latest updates I had gotten, and and I actually looked into this uh, because I'd heard that uh, Mike was talking about, uh, I think in Paul's meeting that he was doing online, was going to give some time frames uh, of being able to see the binary system uh, coming up this year. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, other than being told that there are some very significant things coming up this year on uh, the end that I have here, we didn't, I still was not giving any, any specific dates, just mm -hmm. saying that there are some very significant things that we can anticipate. Uh, so share with me what your knowledge is on that right now. Yeah, um, uh, BP Earthwatch, he was in the channel and uh, I just, I just invited him on and uh, I think uh, he did. He did reply back to me uh, by email, and so I've sent him, uh, you know, what we what I would like to discuss with him. So I'm still waiting on a reply, but it's looking like uh, we're probably going to do a video together on the Grand Solar Minimum. Uh, to be honest, I haven't done too much research with that as of late, um, but I do know that supposedly, and this is why I'm asking BP to come on. Uh, you know. From what I understand, leading to the grand solar minimum, which minimum being lack of sun activity, um, you know, we're supposed each cycle was supposed to be diminishing 
you know, cycle 23 was that was it was diminishing. Cycle 24 was diminishing. Now we're in cycle 25 and um, it's not diminishing uh, as people had suspected it would. And, and uh, part of that is from what Mike from COT would say, that's due to the effects of Planet X and the, the different system coming in, uh, kind of messing with our sun and making it more active than it should be. Um, you know, the idea behind a grand solar minimum, uh, so to speak, is to, you know, with a lack of activity from the sun, we get a higher rays of gamma rays here on the Earth, higher, uh, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not not infrared, uh, radiate, we get higher radiation. Uh, of course, those things, especially the gamma rays, uh, tend to breed more in the cloud coverage. Uh, you know, volcanic activity begins to explode a lot more. Uh, earthquake activity tends to pick up. Uh, and this is generally because uh, the earth begins cooling. Uh, and some speculate that because we get more ice buildup, which puts more pressure on the poles. Uh, and this is what I, this is my kind of a crash course into that. Um, but I've heard and I've heard conflicting reports to this because of what we're going through and, and the effects of Planet X that we may not actually experience uh, our cycle, you know, because these things run in cycles. You know, everyone knows the sun uh, revolves in an 11-year cycle, but then there's a 24-year cycle. There's a thousand-year cycle. There's a 20, well, I think a 2,500-year cycle. And so we're kind of, it, Planet X, from what I understand, is messing up our cycle period right now. And so... Um, I don't quite understand the the fullness of it all. Um, you know, I don't know if we're if you know once we get out of cycle twenty five because we haven't even hit the max yet and we're breaking records right now. Uh, so I don't know, you know, what cycle twenty six is going to look like. I don't know what the off period is going to look like to this, uh, or if we even get an off period with uh, you know Planet X lurking around. Uh, so um, I'm like you. I, I got a lot of questions myself. Uh, concerning this, because what I did know uh, and what I thought I knew has actually kind of, in some ways, gotten erased, <laughs> so to speak. So I don't know if that really answers your question or, or is helping you out any. What What do you know, uh, Anthony, <clears throat> about you know where they were reporting back uh, uh, earlier here in December about this massive hole in the sun, uh, a coronal hole in the sun? Uh, you know, there were, you know, we've seen the images of that, uh, mm -hmm. where it's like, I forget how many Jupiters could fit in this hole. It was so massive. And, um, yeah, it was an insane what number. What do you know about that? Um, yeah, it, it was really interesting because I think it followed on the heels of a pretty significant explosion on the sun that, uh, uh, that did hit Earth. Um, and caused some short wave, short wave radio outages and, and earthquakes and things like that. Uh, it was like there was a mass ejection just before that hole opened up. And so, uh, you know, my I don't really know exactly how that got there. I can only speculate that that was probably what was left uh, once there was that mass ejection uh, from the sun, once that filament had left. Uh, you know, the idea is that when we see the CMEs and these flares come off the sun, some of it is supposed to retract back in uh, to the sun. So we don't always see the full brunt of it leaving. Uh, but on this one, particularly the full brunt, the full the filament did separate uh, from the sun and did not come back on itself, which is what left that uh, massive hole uh, that we saw. And of course, uh, you know, because of that hole, there was a lot of energy uh, that flew in our direction. And of course, we had uh, auroras both in the, you know, the the uh, northern and some southern hemisphere uh, showing up in places that don't normally uh, get them. Uh, and so that's, you know, that's pretty much about the extent of, of what I know concerning that. You know, I was thinking because uh, uh, there was a science, a German scientist that had said to me, and this has been more than a year ago, um, he said there's going to come a, a time, uh, scientifically speaking, where the sun will stop shining for a period of time. And I remember asking him, I said, are, are you are you serious? They're, uh, like the sun would stop shining. How could that even possibly be? Mm -hmm. 
And he was explaining to me that the sun goes through cycles. And he said, there, there comes a time where the sun literally, it's like it's re, um, regrouping itself. And he said, they, they anticipate this, you know, that this will happen, that uh, he said, it won't be like a, a total zero sunlight, but it'll go extremely dim because it's, it's re-energizing itself uh, for its next long journey of burning or whatever the case may be. And, uh, and of course, I, I always just kind of pass that off as being really about the dumbest thing I ever heard from a scientist, although I greatly respect the scientist. Uh, but then, you know, you see this, you know, they show the images of the sun in this massive, massive hole. 60 Earths could fit in this hole. That's how big it is, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, and clearly, you know, a huge gaping portion of the sun just gone. Uh, I'm like, is this what happens? Is this, you know, the, the type stuff that he's talking about? I mean, I mean, granted, you know, you, not only is it a hole, but there's nothing burning in that hole. That's, so it could uh, be the, uh, you know, I know that uh, Mike has talked about, you know, with the introduction of this new of these new planetary system coming in, uh, the photons being redirected, which would move the light. Uh, away from Earth uh, into a different direction, which would bring us a period of darkness. Uh, but we would still receive, uh, you know, we, we would still receive the radiation that would give us the heat. I guess the I forgot what it was called, but um, you know, I'm not saying that's what happened here at all. But you know, as you talk but about it, scientists, he's referring to it. Suddenly, right, right. After a period of time, you know, that's what kind of jogged that in my mind as you were speaking. Okay, that I, that would make sense then, and that would I think that would probably line up more with what uh, what Harold had said to me. You know uh, that it, you know from the way Mike is describing that that yeah that would be the reason why we would not because he told me he said you're going to have several days where there'll be no light, mm -hmm. and uh, he said and you know when he talks he's you know he talks like a scientist you know he's just very calm very collective but everything is very scientific and. Normally, words that are like you know way over my head, you know, it's like a kindergartner trying to talk to college student. You know, there's just no way for me to keep up with it. So, all right, we will move out of this arena there because, uh, like you said, Anthony, you you and I are not <laughs> we're not up to speed on this uh, like a lot of these other guys are. Um, but, I'm, uh, I'm hoping the BP Earth Watch will get me up to speed, and that's, that's what I'm trying there to do. There you go. There. Yeah, <laughs> Jesse is normally up to speed, too. He really is. He's Jesse, I, I really tremendously appreciate Jesse. I appreciate the work that he does. Um, you know, he's always, he's just very sound. He just tells you just like it is, doesn't beat around the bush. Uh, amazing, amazing guy. I really appreciate Jesse a lot. Uh, all right, let's get into this in uh, China. And this is the big issue uh, mm. going on right now. I, I had, mm. I guess, I, I want to say it was about two years ago. I, I, I'm just guesstimating at this point right now. Before we ever heard the first word on the news about China taking Taiwan down, uh, I gotten I was uh, dealing with a meeting with uh, some friends in Washington, and they told me then that China was going down. Uh, not, I'm sorry, that China was going to take Taiwan down. Uh, that it would be something that would be in the near future. Uh, at that time, we really were anticipating within a year's time. Mm -hmm. uh, that time came and went, and but, but even before it came and went, I was getting updates about uh, they're pushing it back. And and the strange thing is, our government always knew that it wasn't yet. It's going to be a little further back, a little further back. Well, that's because the Biden administration uh, has been accused of being involved in that process. Uh, Biden had even met with the CEOs of uh, the corporations in Taiwan, gave them, quote unquote, two years to get your assets out of Taiwan mm -hmm. because we're going to lose Taiwan. Yeah. Um, I had reports from friends in uh, Kansas, uh, big businesses there that knew very well that that was 
true. They were able to confirm it. They had uh, companies coming from Taiwan that were setting up our operation back here in the U.S. Um, I was told that China would not only take down Taiwan, but China would also challenge our hegemony of the entire Pacific region and that they would be going after the Philippines shortly thereafter Taiwan. And then I got the report just recently that um, in order to prevent Trump from ever getting back in office, uh, they're going to make sure that we get into some kind of conflict with Taiwan mm -hmm. and that Taiwan before the election, excuse me, China before the election that, no, I'm sorry, I need to correct that. I think I said we're going to get in conflict with Taiwan. No, we're getting in conflict with China over Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, that is anticipated to take place before the election. And uh, it, it is anticipated that China will go after Taiwan, not only Taiwan now, but Indonesia as well. Yeah. So a lot of crazy things are going on. And I wanted to get any perspective that you may have on this as well, Anthony, to share with us what, what your thoughts are. Yeah, I got a, uh, a few thoughts on this. Um, you know, we... I've always said that from the beginning, when this when this went out, that uh, I didn't think I, when China takes it takes Taiwan because we know they're going to, and if you don't believe us, uh, ask Hong Kong, okay? Because China took Hong Kong and we didn't do anything. We didn't go. We didn't protect the people of Hong Kong. We didn't defend them. We let China take it, okay? And so basically let that serve what happened to, to the people of Hong Kong and what took place. Let that serve as an example of what's about to take place with Taiwan. They're going to take it without a shot being fired. OK, uh, that's just my personal opinion on this. As you've already stated, you know, uh, these plans have been in motion for the last couple of years. I would almost argue that they've probably been in motion since 2020, uh, in my personal opinion, because and I only state that because here in Michigan, uh, there was a chip shortage, which we get those chips to run these vehicles because GM's in our backyard. We got Ford uh, that's in our backyard. We got a lot of automotive uh, industry up here. We And we had fields and fields of vehicles sitting all over the place because we couldn't get any chips made. Well, those chips come from Japan. They come from Taiwan. And so what happened was is our governor uh through legislation or whatever got a factory started here in Michigan and we're producing our own chips now next thing i know arizona is doing the exact same thing now we got a place in arizona you know we may have other places around the nation but we're now starting to produce our own stuff over here that we would normally get from taiwan all right and so uh i think that the infrastructure and the roads already been laid uh for some of this stuff to um to come in fruition for whenever Taiwan uh, or whenever uh, uh, China takes over Taiwan, that we're not put in such a bad imposition uh, to not be able to take care of ourselves. It's like we're preparing for. It. And I remember uh, Anthony Blinken coming out and stating that, you know, uh, that should something happen, that basically we're not going in. We're not putting soldiers out there, you know. Uh, and I remember Anthony Blinken coming out and saying that. And so, uh, you know, <clears throat> our our administration's uh, pretty much tied uh, with Japan. Uh, the one thing that I did find that was kind of interesting, and this is uh, the kind of latest news, you know, we, we haven't seen a whole lot of, of involvement with the United States uh, getting, you know, with putting, with any, put, putting any real pushback against China concerning Taiwan. I mean, we've we've ran some drills. Uh, you know, we've saved face, that kind of thing. Um, but when this issue with the Philippines happened, uh, where China was trying to take over one of their ships, one of their ships had one of their main uh, military or government officials on there. Uh, we saw some pushback from the U.S. government on this one. Some pretty strong pushback, actually. Uh, and uh, matter of fact, it was almost as if they were holding China. Uh, to the fire by their ankles, um, which was pretty interesting to see that kind of reaction come from the Philippines, but not come from Taiwan. So the question that I would probably throw back in your direction is what's so special about the Philippines that's not as special about Taiwan? 
That's a good question is why the Philippines? Because Taiwan, we know why. Taiwan right. is the economic powerhouse, the central. Uh, this It's what China needs for its economy to flourish is to get a hold of Taiwan because all these industries that have been created in Taiwan by the United States mm -hmm. is why the, the Chinese are wanting to go after Taiwan. But the Philippines, I, I really do not know, other than China gaining control, that's what I was always told, that China, the, the, their purpose for gaining control of these areas is because they would become the global new global superpower. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see more and more, too, Xi Jinping is... Uh, becoming a statesman of sorts. He's uh, like uh, uh, like a U.S. president would. Uh, he's becoming more expected to be involved in negotiations and settling uh, disputes they offered to negotiate the Ukrainian crisis between Russia uh, and Ukraine, or really, really NATO as far as that goes. And, um, and, and we're seeing, too, uh, more diplomatic uh, moves, like in the case, oddly enough, uh, the Chinese have worked with the Taliban more recently with the Silk Road Initiative, mm -hmm. uh, wanting to include them uh, in their ancient Silk Road, claiming that the, uh, that the Taliban or Afghanistan used to be part of that actual uh, road itself. And so, and at the same time, we have Italy starting to pull out of that. So it's kind of odd as we look at this to see, you know, <clears throat> typically some of the countries that would be considered, quote unquote, terrorist uh, countries uh, that are becoming more and more part of this new economic system while uh, the existing, uh, you know, what we would consider to be uh, the Western type nations, uh, such as Italy, suddenly backing out of these uh, these in, these new economic uh, system that China has been building. So you know, you kind of can't but wonder what's really going on behind the scenes, you know, and and uh, of course, with uh, China's, you know, taking over those areas, the next thing is supposed to be is going to be the Middle East. Uh, that's going to be another place that they're going to be challenging the hegemony of the United States is in the Middle East. Their troops fighting in uh, Iraq. Uh, you'll have them in Iran. You're going to have them in Syria. Mm -hmm. And back two years ago, I was being told at that time that they were already, China was already inside of Syria. Uh, they were already having uh, skirmishes in Iraq. Uh, they were they were practicing getting their forces uh, prepared. Do you do you have any information on any of these things? Uh, not so much on China and the Middle East. Um, you know, like you, I, I've I've heard for several years that they've been over there. Uh, they really have infiltrated Africa as well. Um, they, they've been doing a lot of uh, economical uh, reforms and things like that in Africa and trying to bring uh, those nations that are like third world nations to at least a second world rating. Uh, we've seen a, a, a lot of um, uh, resources going from China into Africa on that one, uh, as well as the Middle East. The only thing that, you know, I can kind of speculate on two different fronts from two different perspectives, and this is just me talking um, you know, is one, it's kind of a, if you think about, uh, how China's doing this, it's really a playbook from the United States. Uh, you know, because when the United States was inserting its power, that's exactly the same thing we did. Uh, we went into every country in the Middle East, you know, we went and set up a shop in Africa. We went and, uh, you know, went to every corner of the world because that's what you do. If you're, if you're the superpower, uh, you're everywhere. Uh, you're kind of the world's police, so to speak. And that's and we see as we're pulling out, we're leaving vacuums everywhere we go. China's coming in and, you know, they're filling those those voids. The second perspective on this, and I'm just throwing this out there just, uh, you know, to see what bites uh, is this, is that you have to understand that China's got a lot invested in the United States. And the uh, Chinese know that the United States has got some real enemies. Uh, especially in the Middle East, that would love nothing more than to uh, watch us go boom, okay? And that's not in the best interest of China. 
uh, because China, like a good investor, wants to recoup their investments. OK, so you can't recoup a investment if that investment's completely destroyed. So what better way to make sure that investment stays intact than to go out and begin to, you know, conquer other places or begin to make sure that these people stay put, that they mind their business. You know, they stay in their lane and not get involved in what what China's trying and essentially trying to do. Uh, you know, there's that particular uh aspect of all of this as well, you know, getting involved in the Middle East, you know, trying to broker uh, some peace deals here and there uh, really is just kind of keeping the keeping the animals at bay, so to speak, so that they don't mess up whatever China's got planned for us here in the U.S. Well, it does seem that China has plenty planned here for the United States. And the sad thing is, is the Biden administration on multiple occasions has been accused of uh, being uh, complicit with China in some of those plans, and that includes uh, whether we go into anarchy in this nation, civil war, civil unrest, whatever you want to call it, and then uh, turns out that at the end of the day, the Chinese will, will come in to help the U.S. government police uh, the people here and bring things under control. Uh, I'm very concerned about those actions there. And quite frankly, as I watch the rhetoric that's going on, even as the election is getting closer and closer, um, the the fears that I see, that, and I'm watching the media like uh, MSNBC, you know, I'm, I may not agree with everything politically that goes on in the Republican Party, by no means. But at the same time, I'm watching an you know a news organization that has become so biased in their reporting. Instead of reporting objectively, mm-hmm. everything is just one sided. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even if you even say something like that here on YouTube's platform, you know you'll be shut down. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't you can't even say anything about what happened, uh, we'll say, four years ago. Uh, and now I'm watching free speech be totally silenced uh, as even Giuliani, as he was a uh, uh, court, found him you know, liable for paying out this this massive uh, defamation uh, uh, fine. Uh, for these two e- election workers that, uh, that were working at the polls in Georgia. And, of course, all he does is afterwards he makes a statement about it, claiming that he has more evidence and things and that it wasn't the end and that he had told the truth. Um, you know, I don't know the answers to all of that, but it's interesting then how that he, get, he gets hit with another lawsuit. Right. And this time they're trying to push just, in other words, you're not even allowed to speak. Um, it, I guess my concern is I see the, I know I'm kind of going a little bit away from China, which is, I guess, okay in this regards here, but um, uh, it's, it's the same time it's still dealing with China, because like I said, China is going to be the police force of this nation when we go into anarchy in this country. But yeah. I can I see that coming. And I see them setting up the nation right now for that by causing such a division and causing all of this obvious bias in the media. And yet they're claiming that independent media and social media uh, are, you know, people on social platforms and stuff, that they're the ones that are all biased. They're the, all the ones that are spreading false information and lies and things like that. Um, you just can't get any objective reporting anymore. Your yeah. thoughts on that, Anthony? Well, I was going to say that, and this is breaking news. Uh, this just happened right before you and I got on here to do this. Uh, but uh, Trump is disqualified from the 2024 ballot. Uh, Colorado Supreme Court rules the uh, clause of the 14th Amendment applies. So the court then uh, declares Trump ineligible for presidency under the U.S. Constitution uh, insurrection clause. He is removed from the state's 2024 presidential primary ballot. So officially, if you live in Colorado, uh, you will not be allowed to vote 
for uh, Donald Trump in this coming election. And the question will be how many more states will follow suit? Uh, exactly. And, you know, and I'm sure that uh, Colorado has set a precedent in doing that. And there will no doubt be other states that will follow suit as well. Uh, you know, and the question would be, would the Supreme Court uh, step in? And would they, if they step in, will they overrule the state of Colorado? Or, no. or will they go in favor? Or will they abstain? Um and that would be that would be like the beginning of what you were talking about. You know, if we if we see this, other states do this and he gets removed. You know, I mean, you only need a handful of states to actually do this to make it impossible for him to win. You know, and exactly. if that happens, you know, you've got a very large, you know, mega base um, that I just I would suspect probably not going to sit idly by this time around, you know. And so then that kind of, you know, cycles back to around to what you were just talking about, you know, with uh, civil unrest, anarchy and all that other, you know, all those other things where we would need uh, foreign powers to to come in and, you know, take care of that. Because, I mean, our military is so stretched out there, you know, those they're not going to bring those guys back home <laughs> for this. And they're not they're not legally allowed to bring back the, the military of the United States military on its own soil to, against its own citizens. Mm -hmm. So uh, in that regard there, that's why Biden administration would look to an outside source and China has been chosen to be that outside source. Um, it, granted, this country is the most armed country in the world, especially for private mm -hmm. citizens. And the whole objective of a new world order is to disarm the world, disarm this nation. By the way, that's one reason, and a lot of people don't realize it with Israel, that's one reason why you see um, when they were handing out weapons to the people in the West Bank, Israelis don't even realize they're being played. Um, you know, I heard Mike from around the world make the comment uh, not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago maybe, that Israel will end up being disarmed. Mm -hmm. and. I can certainly see that, but it's going to happen to America as well. Mm -hmm. And in order to disarm a nation, you have to create the right scenario to make it look like you've got to justify that disarming. And at the same time, as they're disarming, whether it be Israel or the United States in either case, I also believe that it plays into the New World Order agenda uh, it will play into a, a, a what I would call a beast kingdom agenda. When I say that, what I'm talking about is that clearly when Christ returns, we will see scripture fulfilled. They beat their, their, their swords into plowshares. Uh, we see that peace that will reign on the earth. But if it's not here yet and Christ does not come and you want to bring a false Messiah or somebody who you think is the Messiah, regardless of where or how that comes into play, uh, you still have to then manufacture uh, events to fit the narrative that you want to portray to the world. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if people don't accept that Jesus Christ was truly the Messiah that was sent, then there's going to have to be someone that's going to project that to the world that indeed, uh, you know, if, if their version of the Messiah is here, they've also got to have peace as being brought to the world. And with peace comes to disarming of the nations. And uh, so I, I feel like that that's also something else that's playing into this. And yeah. uh, and I don't think people realize that they're being played. Yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna be. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how they're gonna pull that off, uh, especially here in the in the United States. You know, as you've already stated, uh, you know, we're so heavily armed as private citizens. Um, you know, to actively go from home to home, uh, to even pull to you know confiscate, uh, you know our you know, Second Amendment rights, so to speak, uh, would be one daunting task. I mean, you don't even have enough military to pull something like that off, uh, you, you know, in the United States. Um, 
you know, even if you use, and I've, I've heard of the technology that they would use, you know, using certain satellites, drones that can identify the type of metals and things like that, that would be, um, that would be, that would identify as, you know, weaponry, things like that. They would be able to identify homes um, that have this. But even still, you know, even if you identify it, you get a nice database that shows every address in America that has it. Uh, you still got to approach that person to get it out, you know, uh, and I just, you know, that's going to be uh, without, you know, going any further in that. Um, that's just going to be quite the task. <laughs> it would. It would definitely be a task. <clears throat> and It would probably really take a very drastic situation to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's my concern. Um as I'm watching the events happening and, of course, watching the election that would be coming up, what the potential risks are that are involved. And as you bring out this new news from Colorado, uh, already saying that, OK, now Trump's not going to be on a ballot. You know, it does not look good at all. Uh, mm -hmm. I can just, you know, it's almost like the handwriting's on the wall. You know where this is headed to. Yeah. Uh, I sat in an attorney's office recently and we got on this very subject and uh, even the, the subject of, uh, of um, uh, the, the, the people that are in the movement where they're, they're renouncing their citizenship, uh, becoming sovereign citizens. We were discussing this and, you know, and the attorney said, you know, we do live in a civil, you know, America is a nation that is based on a voluntary status. We choose, we volunteer mm -hmm. to elect our officials, to let them choose the laws. We go by those laws. If we break those laws, we are basically volunteering to every aspect is a voluntary situation. He says, now, as long as the government has enough authority and enough power. If somebody tries to go against that, even though it's a voluntary system, they'll just crush them down and make sure that they stay in line. Yeah. He said, but now the sovereign citizen movement has grown to such a power in the United States, not only in numbers, but in economics, et cetera. He said that they're a power to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. And he said, quite frankly, and he brought up the issue with Trump, he says, and I'm, uh, he said, I think he was very supportive of Trump uh, his first time around. He said, but I'm a little bit more nervous this time. He said, because I realize that this could end up turning into a very bad situation. He said, for example, he said, um, you know, they, he said, they're obviously they're out to try to get him. And uh, he said, and so if he chooses that he's not going to go along with that system and he's not going to be arrested, he's not going to allow them to take him uh, if he is found to some point, let's say guilty of something to where they would say, OK, it was a crime. You're going to jail. He said, not only that, he's got the support of the American people in such numbers that are armed. He said it will turn, it will literally rip this country to part. Yeah. Uh, and when he said that, I realized what he said and what he meant by all these things. But, you know, Anthony, I could not help but believe this is playing in the very hands of what the, the globalists are wanting in the first yeah. place. Their whole objective has been to break this country up. I think I was told at one point, uh, it was five regions, maybe four, and they mm -hmm. were going to have what they call super governors. I was just getting and, ready to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. So we're ahead of there. Yeah, talk a little bit about that, Anthony, and what kind yeah, of yeah. You know, last you, you talk now. about the globalists, and I wanted to, I wanted to kind of um, flip the coin on this because you know just as much as uh, they don't want they don't want Trump in, but I can guarantee you Biden's not going to be in either. Um, and matter of fact, his re reluctancy to bow out and to uh, not run has caused him problems. You know, the first the first warning was all these dossiers and documents that came up, you know, they found in his house and his Corvette and uh, in the White House and all this other stuff. Um, and that didn't you know, that didn't deter him or anything like that. Uh, but now just read just I think it was a 
last night, uh, somebody hit his car. You know, they uh, they hit his motorcade and he was fine. And, uh, you know, he wasn't uninjured or anything. And, you know, somebody was like, oh, well, you know, it must have just been a, a fluke thing. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, I don't think that's a fluke thing. Uh, uh, I'm Italian. And I know how how that runs. <laughs> and uh, I said, that wasn't a fluke thing. That was a warning. And uh, I think, uh, you know, just as much as they're trying to get rid of one candidate, they're trying to get rid of another one, too. Um, one, they're trying to lock up. And the other one, uh, it looks, well, it looks like what it looks like uh, based on last night's events. I won't go any further than that. Uh, but. Uh, it, it, you know, I can see, I can see either event, you know, however it shakes down, it's going to cause an issue because, you know, if, you know, Trump goes out, his supporters come out, they're going to rampage. The other person goes out, they're going to rampage and blame it on the Trump supporters. Okay. Uh, so it, it's a, it's really a catch two twenty. It's a catch 22 situation, double-edged sword type scenario that we're looking at and honestly i don't see a way out of this uh i just don't you know unless somehow some miraculous way you know it would, it would have to be a god thing to intervene that we actually make it to the presidential selection this year uh and they and they just happen to bring a completely different candidate in um and just dismiss both of them through you know uh you know using voting voting machines or whatever i i don't know uh but other that, than that, that I, may I, be the only solution anthony is to yeah. literally disqualify both of them as candidates yeah because i just i just don't see if they don't i i just don't see a way out of the out of this and i i think i think the government those who who are you know those who are still left that semi care for the country still I think they're realizing that too. Like we're in a real big mess here, um, and uh, it, it's a very interesting thing. But you're right; it is what the globalists want. Uh, you know, they they do want this country to 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 fall. Uh, they want us to split up, and you know, uh, that's what I was just getting ready to say. You know, we do know of a plan to split the nation up. I believe it is five different sectors. Uh, each sector would, would be governed. Uh, with its own capital and its own government, it would be uh, instead of the United States of America, it would be just the United States uh, or United Nations or something, some along those lines, uh, or United America. It would be it would be a different name uh, than what we're used to because it's the only it's you know you're going to go from you know 50 states to five sectors, so to speak. You know they're going to have to change the name. Uh, it's even speculated, and a lot of what, what, what I'm saying here is on the plane of speculation, you know, a hypothesis. You know, there's no, I don't have facts. I mean, I'm just being honest. Right. I don't have facts to back any of this stuff up. Okay. So you, you know, don't, you know, don't run with it and say, oh, this is 100% because Anthony said it. Uh, no. <laughs> so, uh, but it is speculated that, you know, everybody might get a piece of the pie. All right. Some sectors may be liberal. So if you feel that way, want to live that way, that's your spot. Some may be conservative. If you want to live that way and you feel that way, then that's your spot. You know, um, there is that idea of just splitting everybody. And if you feel this way, you're going here. And if you feel this way and believe that, you're going here and the two shall never mingle. You know, uh, there is that uh, theory out there as well. And that can be concerning because what if you don't fall in either one of the camps? Where do you go? <laughs> I guess you got to choose your poison, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> right. Uh, exactly. I mean, that's that's another big concern as well. So anyway, uh, listen, Anthony, we appreciate you so much coming on tonight and discussing these issues here. And uh, if you would just kind of remind people just your website and your uh, YouTube channel where they can find you at again. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, just, uh, I appreciate being here. And uh, uh, yeah, you guys can find us, you know, once again, uh, Daily Excellence. Uh, just, you know, go to YouTube, type it in. We'll pop right on up. 
uh, you know, go over there, subscribe to the channel uh, and be a part of what we're doing. We're also on uh, Rumble. Uh, we're really easy to find on Rumble and we're on Patreon. Uh, you know, you can join us for free even on Patreon if you choose to. Uh, we also have a few, uh, you know, Telegram channels. We sh- share news feeds, things like that. And then we do have a website. It's uh, www.dailyexcellence.org, uh, where, where we have a plethora of conservative news outlets uh, that all come together there. Uh, and it's updated in real time there. We also, you know, for those of you who maybe you don't, you're not able to keep up with the news uh, at home, you don't have cable uh, or whatever, satellite. Uh, we have channels on the on there that are streaming uh, on there. So, you know, like we have Mike Lydell's uh, channel over there that that streams. Uh, we have um, uh, the, uh, you know, Newsmax and things like that. Uh, TV and uh, broad, religious broadcasting channels that people can watch uh, that stream over there. So um, you can do those things. And uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I do appreciate being on here. And uh, look forward to working with you real soon, because I I believe we're going to have you over on my channel on June 2nd. (laughs) Sounds great. And uh, Anthony, thank you so much for being on with us tonight. And uh, we thank you for watching and for joining us and uh, uh, just examining some of these perspectives, some things to think about. I'm Steve, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Good evening.